Disjunction is a stealth action RPG hybrid that aims to take what works in each of the areas. Let's start out with the basic gameplay. You enter into sneak mode with the press of a button. While in this mode, your footsteps do not produce any noise, so it will not attract the attention of the guards. The expected trade-off is that you move slower, but while in this mode, you can silently move past enemies or easily take them out or do more damage. You also get an added bonus while in sneak mode. While in sneak mode, this is the only way to see the vision cones of your enemies. Enemies. And this information is very useful so you do not get bombarded by gunmen. The vision cones will allow you to tactically move around the battlefield, observing enemy positions and figuring out the patrol paths so that you can exploit them. While in sneak mode, you can walk right up to an enemy and hit them in the back to knock them out. One feature that I am happy that they included is that you can move knocked out and dead bodies. When some of the annoyances and frustrations are not interfering with the gameplay, the stealth is pretty fun. Stealth is not the only means to get through the levels. Each of the different characters have their own signature firearm. Gunplay can be used as a last resort. The shooting controls are kind of like a twin stick shooter. While aiming, the screen will push in that direction so that can help you out as you are sneaking around. The different firearms are very powerful and can take enemies out very fast. So the shooting is deadly, but the enemies can also take you out just as fast. The shooting does have some decent sound effects along with some impact. What I did appreciate is how each of the levels do allow you to tackle them in any way you want to. Stealth is highly encouraged. You are usually up against several foes at once and they come in different forms. Cameras can cover a large area and alert everyone in the room. Drones are very fast and can do a lot of damage along with the different robots. The human enemies range from different melee fighters, heavies, and then range fighters. The shotgun soldiers are the most deadly. When it comes to the stealth, the guards will regularly follow their patrols and this is where a lot of the rooms turn into mini puzzles to try and figure out how to maintain stealth and take them all out. If a body is found, the guards around him will be alerted to this and will now divert from their normal patrol. This makes it harder for you to maintain stealth, but there is an advantage to this as well. You can use a dead body as a means to bait an enemy to potentially thin the herd. The levels do offer some variety in how you can approach the stealth. One level has objects moving around and you can use them to stay hidden and get the drop on enemies. While in each of the levels you will have objectives to complete along with upgrade kits to find. You will want to take the time to find those upgrade kits as they will help you out with your skills. Completing objectives is the only way to gain experience points. In between missions you can level up your character. The first set of upgrades involves your skills. Each of the different skills have two different upgrades that you can choose from from your upgrade kits. This can range from having a first aid ability that heals you quicker or heals you for a larger amount of health. Each skill has two different choices and this allows for some player expression depending on how you want to tackle the levels with your upgrades. What is appreciated is how you can change these upgrades out at the beginning of each level. So this means that the game encourages you to play around with the different upgrades to find a set that fits your play style. After this you have the talent screen. These are different passive upgrades that you can equip. These talents can improve your attack speed, reduce your detection, improve your health, improve how much energy you find, and much more. To unlock these different talents, you must use your experience points. They operate just like the skills, and you can change which ones you want equipped before each level. When it comes to the progression, it's more on the lighter side of things, but it does provide some decent choices on how you want to use each of the three characters. There are three different characters that you will get to play as over the course of the game. Frank is armed with his revolver, and his passive ability allows him to do more damage after making his first attack. He can use his energy to heal himself along with shooting out a shock dart that will stun enemies, and a smoke grenade which covers a small area and is good for taking out multiple enemies silently. Now Joe is armed with his shotgun. Where the revolver is good for single targets, the shotgun is great for making quick work of anyone. Joe gets more health and a portion of his health can regenerate over 
time. He can charge at an enemy to close the distance quickly, a combat stim that improves his melee damage and has a grenade. Lastly, Spider has access to an SMG. She can create a hologram to distract cameras and enemies, a stun grenade, and can go invisible. She can regenerate a portion of her energy as well. As you can see, the three characters operate a bit differently from each other, which will require you to play them differently as well. For example, Frank can use a skill to heal, but Spider does not have access to any type of healing means. This means that you need to be more cautious when playing as Spider, and this is balanced out by the fact that she has some useful skills for stealth. And like I said earlier, each of these skills can be modified with one of two options. By having three different characters to play as, and they do not play the same, this helps to give some variety. I generally found the stealth action to be pretty fun. I enjoyed how you could mix and match your approach with the different levels. The three different characters was a plus as well, but I did run into a decent amount of flaws along the way. The level objectives are mostly the same, along with the secondary objective. The levels needed more variety from the standpoint. Maybe featuring levels where you are on a time limit or where you're being hunted by a group of foes. One of my biggest issues is with the inconsistent frame rate, especially in the second half. I was playing on the PS4 and it was really noticeable in one of Joe's levels where the game really slows down and where the gameplay requires you to think your movements out and then move swiftly, this can get really annoying when the game is hindering my movements. This isn't minor slowdown, but rather a large amount that can hurt the action. But not all levels are like this. There are other aspects about the game that feel very very cheap. The enemies have a laser focus aim when firing at you, especially for the shotgunners. They rarely miss and will take you out really quick even before you have a chance to react. The same goes for the robots that will hit you with electricity shots. They need better balancing because anytime you get caught with either of these guys in the room, you will probably end up back at a checkpoint. Along with this, there are situations where the game checkpoints can be spaced out a bit too much, causing frustration when you die in some of these cheap encounters. I also think it was a missed opportunity to not reward experience points for enemies that you knock out or kill. Since this is a stealth game, I think if they provided you with more XP for non-lethal takedowns over kills, that would promote the stealth gameplay more, and add some more progression to the game. I did have a good time playing this game, but when the flaws hit, it made me consider not to continue with it. This sort of creates a mixed bag experience that might frustrate some players. I do want to elaborate that it is rewarding to master understanding a set of patrols and then execute a set of stealth takedowns. That is really rewarding, but when the frame rate is actively working against you, that is where I take issue with it. And considering that this game isn't doing anything impressive during these dips, it feels like the game just needs more polish. When it comes to the story, I did not find myself getting invested in any of these characters. There are some neat choices to make some of the beats more interesting, but the narrative failed to pull me in. What was good was the soundtrack. The music is like a mix of relaxing beats mixed with a tone of sadness. It fits the cyberpunk setting very well. Here are a few tracks from the game. Disjunction is a flawed but fun game. The stealth action is pretty fun. I like how the three different characters play differently enough to provide some good variety to the player. The soundtrack is good as well, but there are a good amount of areas that need more refinement here. The game has some serious frame rate issues at time, and this can really hurt the experience. Many of the robot enemies and the shotgunners feel very cheap with their quick aiming. Disjunction is a bit of a mixed bag that has some good fun with some frustration mixed in. If you are interested in this title, then I would recommend you check this one out on a sale. Thank you very much for watching.